One of the most influential and notorious royal families in history was the Tudors, and their kings and queens would change the face of England forever. Henry VIII was known for his brutality, and he would have six wives, two of whom he executed inside the walls of the Tower of London. But Henry was never meant to have been king. It was his father, Henry VII, who founded the Tudor dynasty and ended the Wars of the Roses by marrying Elizabeth of York. But Henry VII reigned for a period of around 24 years, and he brought a lot of stability to the throne. But he died at the age of 52, leaving England in the hands of his son, Henry VIII, who would bring the nation under a significant number of changes himself. But did you know that Henry VII's burial vault was opened a number of times throughout the years? Henry VII became the King of England by the right of conquest, and he then married Elizabeth of York to unite the warring factions of the Wars of the Roses and to bring an end to decades of disputes over the rightful king. Some saw Henry as a usurper who had dethroned the rightful King Richard, but he faced a number of rebellions in the years after that came in the form of pretenders, with these claiming they were the princes in the tower, or Edward V, the boy king who had disappeared from sight inside the Tower of London. He managed to put them down and would show a ruthless side, as he had some of his enemies executed. This showed that Henry VII was someone not to be crossed. Henry was not someone who knew how to run a nation, and he had a number of close advisers who helped him do this. He was more prudent than other monarchs, and he made the crown very rich, through raising taxes and increasing the ruthlessness in which these were collected. But some people were not happy to pay this. Henry VII was a man who was very shrewd, and throughout his reign one of the major boom industries was wool and cloth inside of England, and this was then traded around the world. He also increased his stranglehold over law and order, introducing justices of peace to make sure the nation's laws were being adhered to. Henry VII, despite having differing popularity, did manage to increase stability in the monarchy following the Civil War. But in 1502, Elizabeth of York and Henry VII's first son, Arthur, died. He was the heir to the throne and was very much the man expected to become the next Tudor king. He had died following his marriage to Catherine of Aragon inside of Ludlow Castle and passed away from the sweating sickness. This loss hurt the king greatly, and for a man who rarely showed any emotion in public, he was overwhelmed by grief. Henry VII would cry uncontrollably at court. However, further heartbreak came a year later, as his wife, Elizabeth of York, died inside the Tower of London. She had just given birth, but days later, both Elizabeth and the child died. And with this, Henry VII was devastated and he shut himself away. And it was said he himself became very ill and almost died from this unknown illness. It was said the only woman who could bring him out of his upset was his mother. But following Elizabeth's death, he did consider remarrying. In February of 1508, it was noted that the king was suffering from gout and it was also reported months later that he was... In the last stages of consumption, writers of the time noted how, in the final years of his life, that Henry VII had become sicker more often, and that things were getting more serious each time. It was also reported around this time that Henry VII was very ill and in extremis, and that he was very ill without hope of recovery. But the king managed to battle on as long as he could, and by the end of March 1509, he knew that death was on the horizon, and he drafted his last will and testament. The decline in the king's health was brought about by the fact he was grieving his wife and his son, and many of his close friends and loyal advisers also around this time became sick and ill. With this, Henry VII made sure there would be a seamless transition of power for his son, Henry VIII, to come onto the throne after his death. Accounts of the death of Henry VII mostly come from Bishop John Fisher. He stated that he said how two nights before the king's death he became so weak that he could not hear mass at the altar 
and had struggled for some time to eat and drink. However, he was keen to do his religious duty, and he summoned his confessor to his bedside to hear the sacrament. Mass at his bedside was heard, at Henry it was said to have been a very moving spectacle. It was said that those who witnessed Henry receiving the sacrament were moved with a marvellous compassion and flow of tears, that at some time they wept and sobbed by the space of three quarters of an hour. On the day of his death, he heard Mass again, and this time held the crucifix a number of times with great reverence, embracing it tenderly and kissing it. He was in a significant amount of pain and was suffering and scared, and he in his final moments appealed to Jesus to deliver his soul and to protect him. It was said he claimed, O oh, my blessed Jesus, O oh, my Lord, deliver my soul from the misery of this world, deliver my soul from these deadly pains, deliver my could from this corruptible body. In his final moments, the king's son, Prince Henry, who was just 17 at the time, was summoned to his father's bedside for his final instructions, and the king said, Fatherly and godly exorations committed unto him the laborious governance of this realm of England. However, the original plan was for Henry VII to be buried inside of Windsor, and work had begun on rebuilding part of the chapel as a tomb house, but this was never finished. However, the Lady Chapel inside of Westminster Abbey was being remodelled also, and this would become the resting place of Henry VII. His wife, Elizabeth of York, had been interred in a grave near the new Lady Chapel, but following Henry VII's death, the pair were then interred inside of a large burial vault in the heart of the chapel before the altar and opposite the tomb of Henry's mother, Lady Margaret Beaufort. But Henry VII's tomb was actually placed in an eastern position in the chapel, presumably by Henry VIII, to then make way for his own burial. The tomb cost a huge sum of £1,500 and was made by Pietro Torrigiano of Florence. The monument has a black marble tomb chest and is ornamented with copper gilt and also features the bronze effigies of the king and his queen. Henry VII and Elizabeth's coffins were buried here in a vault beneath the monument and tomb and this vault is 2.7 metres long and 1.5 metres wide and high, and it is not the smallest. The lead coffins were covered with symbols such as Maltese crosses. However, the burial vault of Henry VII was broken into a number of times. The vault was opened first in 1603, and this was hugely significant, as the body of Elizabeth I and her coffin was placed inside the same vault. Because of the size of the vault, Henry VII and Elizabeth of York's coffin may have had to have been moved to the side. Elizabeth I's burial inside the same vault was significant as it was marking her as a very important Tudor monarch and one of the greatest and it was an honour for her in death. However, she would not be laid to rest for long, as when James I came onto the throne, he ordered her to be buried in a vault with her half-sister, Mary I. Elizabeth I's coffin was removed and reburied elsewhere in Westminster Abbey, and then following the death of James I, his body was then interred inside of Henry VII's burial vault himself. It's almost as if James had Elizabeth I moved for himself, to incorporate James I's coffin, the outer wooden shells of Henry VII's coffin and Elizabeth of York's were removed to make room, and this left the first Tudor king and queen inside of their lead cases. But also at this point, the visceral urns of Henry and Elizabeth may have been moved elsewhere. These were the boxes and urns that held the hearts and internal organs of the king and queen after their death, and they were removed during the embalming process. But again, the vault of Henry VII would be opened one more time in 1869 by the curious Dean of Westminster, Arthur Stanley. He was looking for the coffin of James I, and of course he found this alongside Henry VII, and he commented on the lead shroud body of Henry VII. He also sketched what he saw, and it was rather disturbing of an image, 
with the three shrouded bodies lying inside the vault eerily. Henry VII is remembered for being a steady king who brought stability following the Wars of the Roses. He was a man who would not spend too much during his reign, and he lived within his means, but taxed his population harshly at times, making the crown very rich. He would be buried inside the heart of his new mausoleum, the Lady Chapel, and he hoped that this would become a Tudor mausoleum for centuries to come. Within a century of his death, the Tudor period came to an end, and it would be the death of his granddaughter, Elizabeth I, who brought an end to the Tudor period. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.